my name's Ange Brennan. Um, I feel like a little bit of a fraud coming to you today because I'm not a, a clinician or a, a scientist. Um, so bear with me just a moment. Uh, um, I, um, I work for an organisation called Life Worldwide. Um, quite a few people have mentioned um, Professor David Denning in, as uh, one of the instigators of a lot of aspergillosis research. Uh, and I work uh, with David um, on it, the educational arm of his project at Life Worldwide. Um, as part of that job, I... Um, I manage a website uh, and it's it's the more global outreach arm of aspergillosis research. So the the thinking behind the website was we, uh, Professor Denning wanted um, a global audience to access educational materials, especially in countries, um, low and middle income countries that may not have the resources that, that we in Britain or the, the US or within Europe might have. And what we have is a fantastic educational resource that anybody around the world can access. They can listen to videos, they can watch diagnostic protocol videos, and it, it really is a brilliant resource in the fight against all um, fungal infections, not just aspergillosis. Um, as part of my role, I also work with the um, Manchester Fungal Infection Group, um, which it sits within Manchester University. And one of the things that I was quite keen to do um, when I started this role um, was to actually highlight the research that's going on, um, because I found that the researchers who work on these treatments and diagnoses, because they're so close to the subject, they sometimes don't see the amazing impact that their research has and th th that the research will have. And um, so being a little bit of an outsider, I, I was hoping, I hopefully bring that that bit of perspective um, and I've asked some of the researchers at MFEG to record some videos for me talking about their research and talking about how that is going to affect treatments for um, aspergillosis. I've heard a few of you talking about how that you're maybe running out of treatment options and you're looking for new and novel ways to, um, to, to handle the disease. And I, I'm hoping that this gives you a little bit of an optimistic outlook because some of the projects that MFIG and Life Worldwide are working on are, are, are absolutely cutting edge. Um, they're right at the forefront of genomic medicine. And um, I, I hope that it makes you feel that there's going to be some new developments very, very soon. And it's going to be hopefully come from the work at, at MFIG and Life Worldwide. I, I've recorded this video and the, the scientists, I will say, I, they're not natural communicators. So we had to we had to lure them out a little bit to be able to get, get them to uh, record. Um, so I, I, some of them looked like I had kept them in, in a kind of hostage situation, <laughs> but I, I was very encouraging and uh, hopefully supporting them to make the best of the research and to actually be very proud of what they're doing. Um, so hopefully, technology permitting, I will be able to share my screen and share my audio and play this, this video. Well, first of all, this is the Life Worldwide website. This is the educational website that I work on. As you can see, it's got a lot, a lot of um, uh, sort of information for students and clinicians. Um, and the web address for that is fungaleducation.org if anybody wants to note that down as, as a resource. Um, okay, right, fingers crossed, this is, this is going to work. Um, please let me know if you can't hear anything. Although the bar is right in the middle of the play button. There we go. Can everyone hear that? Yes. Yes, I can. Hi, my name's Paul Bowyer. I'm a professor of infection genomics at the University of Manchester. And I'm a member of the Manchester Fungal Infection Group. So we're a group of scientists who work at the university, but we're very closely associated with diagnostics and, and laboratory staff in the hospital, as well as the clinicians in the hospital who work with fungal disease. Our job is to do the academic side of studying the disease. So we're interested in finding out what makes 
fungi pathogenic? Why, why do they cause disease in the first place? We're interested in finding out what makes fungi drug resistant. So why, why do the drugs that we give to patients not work very well sometimes? And we're very interested in finding out also why some patients get disease and other patients don't get any disease at all. So we've been working for many years. So uh, the Manchester Fungal Infection Group was formed about um, uh, seven years ago. Um, it was originally based in uh, Withenshaw Hospital in Manchester, uh, alongside the National Aspergillosis Centre. And we moved to the university about five, six years ago. Um, so uh, our, we work um, mainly uh, now on the cutting edge side of molecular uh, genomics and genetics. So we look at the DNA of the fungus, we try to find out what aspects of uh, the fungal genes and fungal genomes make them resistant to, to fungicides um, or make them more pathogenic. And we also look at, at the patients and we, we, uh, we're trying to find out whether there's any genetic factors that make the patients more susceptible to aspergillus diseases. Um, because we think this is an important thing to, to find out. It helps us predict who's susceptible and who might get a fungal disease. Um, people with asthma, for example, sometimes get fungal diseases, but not, not all, of, all of the people with asthma get fungal diseases. So we're, we're interested in finding out why that small percentage, about 4% or 5%, become additionally um, complicated with, um, with fungus, because this is a, a very unpleasant complication to have with asthma. Um, and so we are, we're directing our efforts to finding genetic factors so we can diagnose people who are susceptible and at risk. We can um, more rapidly detect fungi that are um, resistant and we can carefully and categorically identify the fungi that are present in people's lungs, on people's skin, in people's mouths, uh, and so on and so forth. And that's what we do. So, thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. San Zhao. I'm a researcher based in the University of Manchester. Uh, my research topic is novel antifungal uh, drug discovery and identifying uh, novel antifungal targets. So fungal infection is a huge problem. Uh, we would have more than 1.7 billion infections simply caused by fungi every year. Uh, among which um, there are very severe systematic infections, uh, which would lead to um, uh, mortality at around 1.5 million. One of the major pathogenic fungi, uh, called Aspergillus fumigatus, is killing more than 600,000 people a year. As you can see, there is a huge uh, medical need. Uh, however, uh, the currently available antifungals that we have are very limited. There are only three classes of them and all of them have shortcomings. Um, fungus compared to bacteria is very similar, is more similar uh, to human being, which means uh, some of the compounds that is actively killing the fungus would be also toxic to human beings. That's why we would need to identify noble antifungal um, targets, uh, which would help us to understand uh, what is required for tackling such problem. So we are working on the project, basically generating a whole collection of genetically mutated uh, Aspergillus fumigatus strains. Uh, Aspergillus, Aspergillus fumigatus consists of about uh, 10,000 genes. So in this collection, we're aiming to create a mutants which, uh, with a single gene knocked out, removed. Uh, thus, the, the library would be consisting uh, all the mutants. The aim of uh, creating such library uh, will be able to provide a collection of gene deletion mutants uh, for researchers. And this would arm the researchers to be able to answer specific questions of why um, uh, a gene is related, sorry, uh, of the pathogenic nature of this organism uh, in order to support uh, future development, development of novel uh, antifungal treatments. Hi, my name is Tim Baltzen and I'm a PhD student at the Radboud University Medical Center working in the mycology group led by Professor Paul Voorbij. At this moment I'm a visiting researcher in the Manchester Fungal Infection Group um, in the lab of Michael uh, Bromley. 
My PhD studies focus on Aspergillus fumigatus spore germination. Germination of inhaled spores is crucial to establish an infection in the lungs. Um, so during my studies, I uh, tried to gain more knowledge on how these uh, dormant spores transition into a vegetatively active cell. And by gaining more knowledge in these uh, molecular processes, uh, we may uh, be able to find new antifungal targets. Hi, I'm Izzy. I'm a PhD student at Manchester Fungal Infection Group. My project is to find new drugs to help fight aspergillosis. So a lot of the drugs on the market already affect the cell wall of the fungi because we don't have a cell wall, so affecting this area can kill the fungi and keep us safe. Um, but the trouble is, a lot of fungi are getting resistant to these drugs that target the cell wall. So it's good to try and find new drugs that have a different mechanism of action. So my project is looking at these two proteins called NIMT and NIMX. Um, and when these two proteins interact in the fungi, they allow the cell cycle to progress, meaning that the cells can keep on dividing and keep on growing and the infection keeps happening in your body. So I'm trying to look for molecules that can inhibit this interaction between these two proteins so that the fungi keep, can't keep dividing and growing. Um, hopefully my work will help find new drugs and new ways to treat aspergillosis and help patient outcomes. My name is Professor David Denning and I work at the University of Manchester and I'm also the Chief Executive of the Global Action for Fungal Infections. Um, we set up Life Worldwide in 2012 to try and improve access to straightforward, accurate information about fungal diseases across the world. It's in English and in Spanish, and there's a lot of news items on it as well, as well as a lot of videos which may be helpful for you. One of the things we've tried to do is to provide direct links to manufacturers of diagnostic tests for fungal disease. We hope that access to and knowledge about the diagnosis of fungal disease will improve patient care across the world. There are also sections on treatment and other aspects related to fungal disease which you might find helpful. Today on World Aspergillosis Day, one of the highlights of the fungaleducation.org website is its sections on aspergillosis. This is an area which I've been particularly focused on in the last 20 years and it's a complex area for many patients and many doctors. We hope that the LIFE website, fungaleducation.org, will help you unravel the complexities of this illness and make it easily understandable and accessible to you, your colleagues and your students. Hello, my name is Margherita Bertuzzi and I'm a scientist working at the Manchester Fungal Infection Group at the University of Manchester. The research in my group focuses on how our respiratory system deals with a major component of the air that we breathe in every day, which is fungal spores. In particular, we focus on the um, uh, mold pathogen Aspergillus fumigatus, uh, which uh, initiates uh, more than 3 million chronic and 300,000 uh, invasive, uh, likely fatal, uh, infections um, annually worldwide. Uh, importantly, however, even if fungal diseases such as those caused by Aspergillus fumigatus cause um, as many deaths annually as tuberculosis and malaria, we still lack um, effective antifungal drugs. So um, we previously discovered that um, specialized cells which line the airways of our uh, lungs called epithelial cells are able to ingest and kill fungal spores. And we also found that this ability of epithelial cells to ingest and kill fungal spores is affected in patients which are at high risk of fungal infection, such as patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Yeah. Um, while this view is rapidly changing, for a long time epithelial cells have been thought to be just uh, passive bystanders. So it was really exciting for us to discover that they actually act against the fungal spores that we inhaled and that when the uh, antifungal activities are impaired, this might contribute to susceptibility to fungal infection. So we are now using uh, a toolkit of
Using cutting-edge technologies, fluorescent fungi and uh, lung cells, uh, which are harvested directly from human donors, we are now trying to understand how um, epithelial cells recognize and kill uh, fungus spores. And we do that by using uh, toolkits which we have available in the laboratory to um, edit the genome of uh, fungi and host cells so that we can determine in details which are the components on both sides that are necessary for this process. We aim to understand how epithelial cells recognize and kill the fungus, how this process is um, um, deficient in, in patients which are at risk of fungal infections, and how uh, this process facilitates uh, um, the action of other immune cells in our lungs. And, and an understanding of this um, and how epithelial cells contribute to clear Aspergillus mellitus spores and other fungal spores is very important from a clinical point of view because it will enable us to um, understand and develop novel technologies to facilitate treatment of these lethal fungal infections. I'm Lillian Chema Chidi Onora from Nigeria, doing a PhD at the University of Manchester in Manchester Fungal Infections Group Lab. So my work is to analyze the role of transporters in drug resistance in, Asper in Aspergillus fumigatus. Aspergillus fumigatus is a causative agent of aspergillosis, a fungal infection, which is actually um, resistant to the drugs available for treatment. So my work is to look at the, the role of uh, transporters. Transporters are kind of um, tools which this Aspergillus fumigatus uses for drug resistance. So my work is to look at the transporters, the efflux transporters and the influx transporters which are involved in drug resistance. So this work, most work has been done on the transporters, but then they've not really explored all the transporters involved in drug resistance in this particular organism. So my work will look at all the transporters. So the aim of this is to explore techniques, to explore new means by which this um, disease, aspergillosis, can be treated. So we can improve treatment and stop resistance. Thank you. Hi, my name is Norman and I'm working on a Wellcome Trust funded collaborative grant together with Imperial College London, the Brompton Hospital in London, Radboud University in the Netherlands and the University of Nottingham. I am currently working on the um, genetic signatures of antifungal drug resistant Aspergillus fumigatus and what this means to patients. This would mean that we're looking at genetic signatures of differences in patient groups, uh, different geographies, and differences in uh, Aspergillus fumigatus fungal strains that are drug resistant versus non-drug resistant strains. What this would mean is that we can eventually move to a more personalized medicine where we know what kind of genes are important in Aspergillus fumigatus for this particular patient group uh, and then go to personalized medicine in order to combat fungal infections. Hi, I'm Saima. I'm a technician providing essential background support at the Manchester Fungal Infection Group. I'm also a part-time PhD student. My research is on a fungus called Aspergillus fumigatus. This fungus is found everywhere, especially in soils, recycling decaying plant matter. It populates by releasing tiny invisible circular bodies called spores into the air. And it is estimated that each one of us inhale about 200 fumigated spores every day. But nothing happens to us because our immune system fights the fungus out. But in individuals with a compromised immune system, for instance those on chemotherapy, steroids or an ICU patient, the same spore manages to grow in the lung and causes extensive lung damage. 
Imagine if you knew which genes of the small but killer fungus switched on lung damage. This is what my research is about. I have screened over 400 molecular switches which are single mutant knockout of regulatory genes in fumigators using a lung cell model. And we have found that fumigators uses distinct set of genes to drive the early and the late phases of lung infection. Interestingly, we found that fumigators uses specific and timed mechanisms of attack on the lung cells. This is very exciting because this will help us understand a little bit more on the when, the why, and how Aspergillus fumigatus invades our lungs. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rachel and I'm the infection technician for MFIG. So my job involves me looking after all of our infection models in the lab. So when everyone else, so PhD students, um, other technicians, postdocs, um, want to test whatever they're working on, with, whether that be drugs or mutant strains of Aspergillus to see how they grow differently, um, that's when they will come to me. So we start off with looking at um, cells. So we use an immortalized cell line and so that means that they just can keep on growing um, in the lab indefinitely and they are called A549s and they're a uh, lung epithelial cell so obviously astrogenesis affects our lungs mm. um, so uh, lung mammalian cell is the best one to use if we're looking at single cell models um, so then from there we'll move on to um, Galeria melanella so they are the larvae of the greater wax moth so they're little worms about this big and from that we can see how drugs or again different strains of aspergillus will grow within a whole organism and they have part of an immune system but not um, the full immune system that humans and other mammals would have. So once we've got an indication in our cells and in Galeria of how a treatment might work um, we can also move into mice, so obviously they have lungs that are very similar in structure to ours um, and that will give us an even better indication of how a treatment might work. So I really, really enjoy my job because I get to work with um, everyone within the lab really and work on lots of different projects, so I get to find out um, like the different stages of treatment development and get a really wide understanding of how aspergillus fumigatus works as well. Well, thank you. Thank you for watching. I hope you found that interesting. I was certainly fascinated to find out so much more about aspergillus and aspergillosis and the, the, the sort of global fight to against this fungal infection and the new technologies that everyone is utilising to, to work on new treatments and more efficient diagnoses. So hopefully that, that gives us some hope for the future for some new treatments and some better patient outcomes. Um, if you want any more information, I did bob my email address up, which is info at lifeworldwide.org. Um, or yeah, follow us on Twitter, follow Life Worldwide or MFIG on Twitter. Thanks a lot. <laughs>